I'm starting to see drug tests creep up more and more into job advertisements and even information pages for schools. Uh, you know, you got to piss clean, hair clean, whatever, you know, must have a negative drug test result to proceed. Well, I think it's bullshit. You know, I see it in dri dr driving, um, driving related occupations. Well, it's bullshit there because it makes about as much sense as having an alcohol usage drug test. I don't mean like having the breathalyzer by the side of the road that, you know, to see that if you're impaired right now. I mean, if you've had any alcohol in the past 30 days. Like, if you had that kind of a standard for alcohol testing, then we would probably be more able to see that, oh, you know, this, this drug testing stuff is kind of unethical, you know, it, it, it's really, um, you know, because it's not about whether or not you can do the job, it's about whether or not, you know, you pass muster with the moral police. And fuck that shit. What I do privately that has nothing to do with my job is, is none of your business. Neither is it your business when you do random drug tests dur during employment. Like, that, that's, that's just as whack. Y you could, you know, if you had probable cause um, to perform a drug test, I, I suppose that's, that makes some kind of sense. Like, if you... If you see somebody who looks like they're driving impaired, you flash the lights and you you know you've been drinking tonight and you know you may uh, you may you know, step out of the car and you know um, <laughs> you know give you a breathalyzer or something you know like put put you through the test then you could make an argument for pulling over drivers at random without probable cause and doing testing for alcohol. Um, I'm not sure I want to live under that regime, but you could do it. It's it's defensible, but the the thing is, we're we're still talking about whether you're using alcohol right then. We're not talking about whether you've used alcohol at all in the past month or the past three months. But you know, marijuana, for instance, lingers in your system for quite a while um, after the psychoactive uh, effects are minimal. So. You know, we have no ability to distinguish between people who are using marijuana and people who are, like, using marijuana generally, like you would use alcohol generally, or being stoned out of their mind right now. All we can see with alcohol is whether you're impaired right now, and so that's all we care about. And then with marijuana, all we can see is whether or not you use it at all, and then that's all we care about. And that that's bullshit. So I'm going to throw in this clip from a documentary, and I think it illustrates how drug testing has is on, on the state side has been creeping more and more into people's lives, and we're now starting to get it here. And I think we should resist. We should say, no, this is bullshit. We're not going to stand for this. You are discriminating unfairly, and, you know, fuck you. Especially now that we were generally at least in favor of decriminalizing marijuana. So it would be inconsistent if we're giving drug testers and employers and educators and government institutions so much breathing room on this. We, we really need to starve the oxygen out of this. There are millions of drug tests per year. There's money to be made on that. It's huge. It started off with people saying, we really need to test people in dangerous occupations. Things like police officers should be tested, pilots in airplanes. Then somebody said, well, our athletes, we should probably test them for drugs too. Then somebody came along and said, well, it's not just the professional athletes. How about the athletes in colleges and high schools? They need to be tested too. And then they thought a little harder and they said, well, suppose we just test everybody that goes out for an extracurricular activity. That should be constitutional because they don't have to do that, you know. So now if you want to join the chess club at school or the French club, you got to pee in a bottle.
Now they're pushing to make laws to test all children in school. All the studies show this doesn't have anything to do with whether kids use drugs or not. So it looks to me like this has a lot more to do with the money that's being made for drug testing. Can you imagine how much money will be involved if we can randomly test every child in school? A lot of these places that have been urine testing have refused to continue to do it because the only thing that these urine tests are finding is marijuana. The other drugs that people take dissipate from their systems fast enough to not be found. If they smoke a marijuana cigarette, 28 days later, if they pee in a bottle, they're going to show that they've had a drug. But if they use a hard drug, heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine, in a long weekend, nobody can tell that they've used that drug. So what does that say to our young people? It says, if you don't want to get caught, don't use the soft drugs, use the hard drugs. It's not just urine anymore, it's, uh, it's hair and saliva. Uh, they'll do blood testing. There's industry there, this is money. They're not doing it for free. And if you see an employer or an educator or a government, in government institution uh, asking you to submit to a drug test, you should ask them, why? Why the fuck are you doing this? Perhaps a specific occupation like driving a truck even could be construed as a privilege, I suppose. But the reason why you want to do the thing, unless it's your life's passion to, to drive, and I suppose for many people it is, the occupation itself isn't really the point. It's the, it's the income. It's the ability to live that part i i don't want to say that the world owes you a living but we need to make sure that people have a meaningful opportunity to make a living and if they don't then we need to help them out i just don't buy this like you know you deserve what you get mentality um you know, we're a, we're a rich country. We don't need to have this retributive, zero-sum game mentality about everything we do. Inasmuch as you believe that drug testing is a symptom of evil rather than a purging of evil, then you should speak out against it. I... I will try to speak out against it um, if I ever come across a job or something that I want to do. I will bring it to their attention. If more people did that, the expense of one person doing so would really not be so great. Anyway, for a start, I would recommend that drug testing, alcohol testing, any kind of testing like that not be done absent probable cause. And I don't apologize for not kowtowing to your particular opinion on what the ideal drug regime for this country should be. If I can find a way to do something that causes you no harm or expense and causes no others any harm or expense, it shouldn't be any of your fucking business. Pardon the wardrobe change, so I've got a few things to add. Lots and lots of things can be addictive, habit-forming, whatever you want to call it. Video games, information on the internet, just browsing Wikipedia, coffee. There's probably people out there who wish they'd never started drinking coffee. Should we ban coffee, therefore? Many of those same people will respect that it's an individual decision. And I would maintain that coffee can be useful, but depending on coffee seems to be one of the trade-offs. About the drug testing, I could go clean for months, get the job, maybe, then submit to random drug tests while I'm doing the job. If I wanted the job badly enough, it was like my lifetime dream to do this thing, 
yeah, I, I, I might bite the bullet and do it. Like, if it was going to transform my life and be this wonderful, amazing thing. Um, falling short of that, which I think virtually every job that would require a drug test anyway would, um, I'm more inclined to say fuck you because what you're requiring of people is wrong. And my submitting to it is just complicity. It's just it's just legitimizing what you're doing. And fuck you, this wrong thing that you're doing is not going to get any legitimacy from me. A few things about marijuana specifically. Pot is kind of useful. Carl Sagan used marijuana, although I, I don't want to say that, like, just because a prominent person did this thing, therefore it's okay. But Sagan is a reasonably rational individual, so if you respect rationality, you probably should also respect that Carl Sagan conscientiously found marijuana useful. While you're high, you would probably come across some some thoughts you wouldn't otherwise have had. You'll associate things in a different way. You'll see things from another perspective. Like, and you, you you'll be you'll be forced into seeing things from another perspective. And that can be very, very useful. They can be scary sometimes. You will have to face things that you have tried very hard not to think about. You will be unable to lie to yourself about what you want. Your body will assert itself in an amazingly pure way that if you're in the wrong company could really blow up in your face. So if somebody looks at you and is like, oh, are you having a weird high? Yeah, you're just having a weird high. Maybe just smile and nod. Um, it's kind of one of those you can't handle the truth moments, but, you know, well, they can't handle the truth. So, smile and nod. The things that you will think, some of them are hit and some of them are miss. Some of them are huge, huge misses, like preposterously ridiculous things. So, think these through when you're neurotypical again, and be like, does this make any sense, this thing that I thought? And, you know, sort of process it backwards and forwards. I would say, though, consider putting your web browser or your wallet away if you're really, really high. You may do some things that just won't stand up later. Well, your mileage may vary. In any case, I'm pretty sure that you would be doing the work behind the actual inspiration when you're quite sober. You can get distracted fairly easily, and it really, I hate losing my train of thought when I'm high. I'm like, oh man, that thing was so good, and I want to get back to it. Nah! I'm not on illicit drugs right now, but I did drink a rock star on the drive down here, so I might be a little bit wired. I very much value the insights I've attained. In terms of taking something that I thought of doing while high and transforming it into this amazing world-changing thing later, if I ever do that, you'll be the first to know. I was putting the video together and I think one thing I forgot to talk about was the morality of following the law. That is problematic. The law can sometimes be terrible. It would be like saying that somebody in North Korea who speaks out against their government must be immoral because, oh, they're breaking the law. So I don't think your morality should be grounded in law just because it's the law. It needs to be a little more than that. Ironically, you can smoke marijuana openly in North Korea. I don't think it's actually legal, but the authorities tolerate it.